Are people who grew up in the Asian bubble enclave usually more closed-minded or not? Well, guess what, David? There's a debate going on on Reddit. Let's see where it goes. Yeah, this thread was uh, quite a few responses long. Of course, there was a range of opinions. Some people said yes, maybe no. We're going to get into the comments, our own takeaways. Make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notifications. And real quick, we have to address the ASEAN enclave culture that was referred to in the Reddit thread as like, I don't know if these people who are into these things are open-minded. May I refer to you as ASEANs listening to EDM driving JDMs, wanting to be an ABG or ABB, singing at Nori Bongs or KTVs, watching animes, 88 Rising, listening to K-pop, drinking boba in the morning, soju at nighttime, vaping, having hype beast clothing and bare bricks, and Asiatic theme tattoos. They want to spend their time with clubs, drugs, and be wannabe R&B thugs. Sounds pretty lit. <laughs> Sounds like a good flushing night or a 626 or a... Uh, OC, you know, Bay Area. OC, they yeah, got yeah. a little bit of this. Man, uh, yeah, I mean, dude, honestly, all those things you named, if I wasn't Asian, I would think that uh, that was almost like a different language. You know what I mean? But anyways, guys, we're going to get into it because those are the general traits of the Asian enclave as of right now or as of at least even the past 10, 12, 15 years. 20, even. 30, really? Yeah, true. Dude, they've been raving forever. Yeah. I mean, I think rap was in for a little bit. It's back to raves. Yeah, so let's talk about it, guys, because there's a number of responses. I thought there's some pretty good perspective in this thread. Obviously, we are not from the bubble, but we did live in the bubble over in the San Gabriel valley for a number of years so. i enjoy the bubble i'm not of the bubble but i enjoy sampling <laughs> the taste of the bubble it was we lived in the bubble for some years all right so Th this was a response it. andrew from somebody who grew up in the asian or asian enclave saying it's not closed-minded it's just growing up around more people with like-minded upbringings so basically you just don't have to explain a lot of things that you would have to explain to other people so it's no it is not closed-minded it's just growing up with like-minded people it's great it's the best. Yeah, I don't know. Closed-minded, it has such a connotation to it. So, but I, what I will say this is when you live in the Asian bubble, oftentimes you're essentially consuming a lot of culture from Asia in America. So that means part of your life is literally being lived in Asia. Not most of it, but part of it is. Versus if you live outside of the enclave, maybe like almost none of your life is being lived in Asia. But if you surround yourself with so much Asian content, Asian culture, Asian people, Asian faces, yeah, then it's almost like somebody who, uh, you know, goes to Asia or grew up in Asia and only consumes American but content. But it doesn't mean that your Asian friends within that, like, 1% of America, America's 330 million people, let's just say the people you can ping with if you keep it super Asian is 3.3 million. That's 1% of the distribution of the population of America. It doesn't mean that 1% doesn't have a variety of different personalities that you could learn from, though. Yeah, And absolutely. they have a diff different interest. Your Asian friend that's into trucks. Your Asian friends that's into... Sports cars. Yeah, absolutely. Also, by the way, when you talk about Asian enclaves, that doesn't mean that the neighborhood is 100% Asian. Actually, in the San Gabriel Valley, a lot of the neighborhoods are are quite significantly Latino, right? right? But I will say that although there is some mixing between individuals, I wouldn't say the communities as a whole are mixed together. Yeah, somebody said, listen, man, I get what you're saying, but you are only referring to SoCal Asians when you were referring to the vaping AZM, JDM, ABG, ABB culture. Ah, all right. So this is where I kind of slightly disagree. I do think SoCal culture embodies that to the T to 100%. No, to, to the 10 out of 10 level. If you go to SoCal, specifically, in my opinion, OC, maybe San Jose, mm -hmm. you're going to see this lived out to a 10 out of 10 level. I would say the San Gabriel Valley, decent amount. But the uh, San Gabriel, SG 626 is a little bit almost like Taiwan. Like Asia, yeah. Asia, right? Um, All right, so what I'm going to say is this. I looked at the statistics, guys, and the cities or the counties with the highest Asian population are actually in the Bay Area. This is outside of Hawaii, of course. But yeah, 25% of the population in San Mateo, Alameda, and Santa Clara counties is Asian. Now, let's talk about SoCal. San Diego and Orange counties also have a significant number of Asians, each comprising about 24%. So that's even higher than Los Angeles County. Right, right, right. But it does variable because, you know, you can live your life in one city, for example. Andrew, I know Mark Keppel High School, which is in Monterey Park, I believe is like 75% Asian as a high school. So there's ones, there's certain cities even within that that like 
over indexed like super high like 80 percent asian like hawaii numbers but i guess in the bay area i know kids who went to like i don't want to say if it's fremont or santa clara high but these some of these high schools are like 85 percent asian yeah it's complicated because stuyvesant high school in New York is 90% Asian, but you would never say that you're living in an Asian bubble. You just say that building is an Asian bubble. Right, right, right. Um, Andrew, what do you think about somebody saying, yeah, you're just talking about the party Asians. Of course, there's going to be church Asians, athletic Asians, volunteer Asians, even though church Asians and the athletic Asians seem to get mixed together often, as you can see in Netflix's beef, you know, there was like the basketball Asians mixed with the church Asians in one tribe. Right. So wait, they're asking who is the most like, no, this guy was saying that like you can be in the enclave and not necessarily be about Boba vaping AZN, JDM. Yeah, 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 that's true for sure. For sure. But I would say that those things that we name the, the ABG JDM stuff, that is, that is very distinct to those areas. Mm. Not necessarily that they make up 60 or 70% of the people, but those are the distinct traits, traits that other non-enclaves might not have as much. Somebody said, I'm Filipino and I grew up in an Asian enclave in Inland Empire and we were all Asian acting, but we still drove monster trucks because we also took on traits from Inland Empire. So here's the thing about enclaves, guys. There is no set size to what an enclave is. It's all about your mindset, whether you live in the bubble. The bubble around you could be literally a 100 people. That's a bubble technically. If you just spend most of your time and you buy into that system and you run by the kind of the social norms of and the culture of those 100 or, or 200 people. Right, right, right. Like you're saying that, you know, you, you kind of decide the, the size of your own bubble. Yes. Like I remember people at church I mean, I'm sorry, at my high school that were like super religious Jehovah's Witnesses, they were almost like living in a bubble within our city, even though the other people around us, oh. we didn't even know anything about that bubble. Dude, I knew, we knew Mormons at school and there was like a Mormon community. Right, right. It's not nearby. like they were like pinging with the rest of the school at the same rate. They'd go back to their Mormon world after school yes, and stuff yeah. like that. So it's very complicated. Somebody said, it's not as close-minded as much as it is just your comfort zone. Um... Yeah, any, but any type of personality can emerge from anywhere. I don't like saying that closed-minded people come from the enclaves and open-minded people come from outside of the enclaves. I would agree with that to an extent. I would say that, you know, if you're raised in Europe as a basketball player, there's a chance you could be a ball hog. If you're raised in America, there's a chance you could be fundamental, non-flashy, and team-minded. However, there are patterns of coaching, yeah. though. I thought this one comment made a good point. They said, you know what, though? Actually, a lot of that SoCal Asian population that you're referring to contributed a lot to the general Asian-American culture in bridging the gap between Asia and America. So, although it sounds kind of frivolous, like how you make it sound, they actually are kind of leading the way as far as Asian American culture. That's actually a good point, man. That is fair. It is fair because, listen, listen, back in the days of Asian YouTube, you know, I'm going to say six, seven years ago at the peak, that was like very SoCal Asian. But, but what do you think about the argument that all the people that are quote-unquote pushing Asians forward in politics and media, I would say nine out of ten do not come from the bubble. Like maybe 19 out of 20 of them don't come from an Asian enclave, right? But it's true because being raised in an Asian enclave, it's like, it's just a different skill set. It's not going to necessarily prepare you to like rise the ranks of like a white or a black system every day, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I know what you mean. Obviously, for sure, politics. I think media is a little bit easier to be from the enclave nowadays. But yes, typically, a lot of the Asians who want to join these spheres and rise up the ladders of the non-Asian systems were not from the enclaves because they were not stuck in their comfort zones because their comfort zones don't have those many levels. That's it, right? Yeah, somebody said all the Asian subgenres seem to be melted into one internet culture in 2023. I remember there used to be rocker Asians, artsy fartsy creative Asians, the outdoor Asians, the hipster Asians, and nowadays it's all just one thing that's on subtle Asian traits that's been mixed together. Yeah, no, obviously we used to do the different types of Asian girls and different types of Asian guys. And, uh, but no, I, I mean, do you agree with this? I don't think it's true. I think that it's, that's the meme culture that's kind of being pushed, but that doesn't change how all the kids are. Obviously, even all different types of people are still consuming the subtle Asian traits memes. I do think that there's a lot more genre mashing between identities or personas in 2023 though, because if you look at rock music, that completely as a persona has like gone away, yeah. right? It's been folded into hip hop. Now there's like rock centric hip hop and emo centric but, but, hip hop. But I'm going to say this, even whether you identify as an Asian rap guy or an Asian rocker guy or an Asian fob guy, everybody can enjoy like a rice cooker meme. 
Right. You know what I mean? Everybody can enjoy a meme about your parents being fobby or your parents wanting something traditional. And, for and you. obviously that's why those memes are so, out, you know, overly successful. Yeah. Yeah. But obviously the typically when you imagine a person who is consuming subtle Asian traits memes, you can you, you imagine like some young boba kid. All yes. right, man. We got a real quick bring in Fred, who is half Latino. He's half Mexican, half Korean. He's going to give us some insight onto different uh, bubbles, whether they're closed minded or open minded. All right. Joining us today, we've got Fred. You're a half Mexican. You're half Korean. Korean, but you grew up near both a Latino enclave as well as an Asian enclave. Fred, is it safe to say you are familiar with both bubbles? Yes, very familiar. Might have lived a bit more than the other, but they're both there. Which Wh one are you more familiar with? Which one did you live more in? I would say recently the Asian enclave bubble. For sure. Can you can you describe your Asian enclave? Just give it a shout out. You know, just a casual pho. You go out to eat uh, go out to eat pho, bubble tea, uh, a lot of KBBQ. Head out to karaoke, NRB. That was basically how I lived for most of my life. Right. I guess, have you also have your heavy exposure to the Latino enclave life? Uh, not as prominent as my Asian enclave life, just because uh, that part is only from my family side. And I kind of live separately from my family side. The only times I go there is when it's a family gathering Birthday party, but you have had you have like swung out of pinata. Many oh yeah, times, for right? sure. For, as a kid, I yeah. Did well, it so let's just times. be clear here. You yeah. did, you got your Mexican card. You're very fluent in oh, Spanish. Yeah, sure. But I want to ask you because have you heard anything from each side, from each enclave, or people from each enclave or, or bubble that would lead you to believe that they're like more closed minded than others? You know, like something maybe from your Asian friends, and they just say something like ignorant. You're just kind of like. Massage. I, 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 yeah. Right, because you're mixed, so you've seen multiple worlds. We're talking about people who have only grown up primarily in one world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think it is close-minded. Like whether or not if you want it to be or not, it's just it's just there. It's the same thing as being ignorant, right? You don't want to be ignorant, but sometimes you are ignorant. No? What what is something that you went? Oh man, that's a little bit close-minded. Not that I hate you guys for it, but it, you know, I from my perception, that's a little close-minded of maybe the food spots we go to or something. Yeah, um, for my case, a lot of my friends, we only go to Asian restaurants. Not really more of the Hispanic side, just because you know. They're not familiar with the cuisine. Not know? even tacos? Taco trucks is, is the that's, only, it's the beginner level, man. The only thing they've gotten was probably Taco Bell. And that's probably it. <laughs> oh, yo, Taco Bell doesn't count. Um, So I guess, what do you think it is? Like, do you think there's anything wrong with saying, hey, man, you grew up in an Asian bubble. You're probably close-minded. Is that is that wrong? Is that a wrong accusation to make? Because that's obviously what this Reddit post was sparking. I mean, it is to a certain extent. Like, it is kind of rude to call someone closed-minded, but it's you know sometimes it's not their fault. But you are sometimes at fault because you choose not to try it out. Yeah, you know that, there's a cuisine out there, but you don't want to try it out because you're more comfortable with your own food. You have no sure. desire or curiosity, right? Exactly. Well, you know what it is, guys. I'm looking up the definition of closed-minded and ignorant. Okay, and they're a little bit different, so I don't like to use them as synonyms for each other. So closed-minded is having or showing rigid opinions or a narrow outlook. That's the first definition, okay? And then of ignorant, it means lacking knowledge or awareness in general, uneducated. So I think that in a way, even though both sound negative, ignorant is in a way more understandable if you grow up around one single type of person. Closed-minded is actually an, you're actively cutting off other things. You're actively looking at the, wor the world through a narrow lens, and I think that's why closed-mindedness is different. I think a lot of people grow up ignorant. Right. You're saying it's almost more naive. Yeah. Or, or just ignorant versus being uh, aggressively. Closed-minded has a certain connotation that may be too extreme. Yeah, no, closed-minded definitely has that connotation where you're actively like seeing things how you want to see it versus... I'm just ignorant, I don't know. So if you tell me you're out, Fred's like, hey, bro, like, why don't we go do this? And they're just like... Oh, I, I never thought of it that way. Thanks, Fred, for like opening my mind. I guess I guess I'm open to it. If you lead the way, can you speak Spanish to the waiter? Are you going to order the tacos? Thanks, man. So, could you say a person can be closed-minded and ignorant? Yeah, I, I you probably you, can be both too. You bro, probably can be a mix. Yeah, why yeah. Not? If you both, you're just being stupid. But I do think a lot of people are born ignorant. For sure, yeah. because we're all raised in our own bubbles, right? Sure, yeah. uh, would you say that like people on the Latino side? in the town you're from, would they be in their own bubble and not know about the Korean bubble or Asian bubble? The, okay, the, the reason why I say this now is, yes, I do believe, just because that's their only way of working, right? So, like, a lot of the Hispanics work for a lot of Asian restaurants that they are probably have to, like, mix themselves into the Asian bubble. Oh, okay. Right, right, right. So you're saying there's some sort of integration due to occupation. Yes. Do you think in their off time after they get off work and they're like, 
you know, they were making like the kimchi G K or whatever, but like they're off work and they're like, Hey man, I'm going back to the Latino like bubble, man. Like oh, that's I'm it. Sure. I'm sure. But they do eat a lot of Asian cuisine. Yeah. That's their lunch break. You know, they no, I, I'll give it right. to you, man. I think a lot of Mexicans, I mean, I'm not to assume everybody's Mexican, but like the Latinos, they're very open-minded though. Yeah. They generally are. to food, especially to food. They will, I've seen Latinos at like every restaurant. Yeah. Like almost so. Hey man, shout out to Latinos. Um, I would say this, man. I think just seeing other worlds makes you more interesting. You look at Drake, raised rich suburban Jewish in Toronto, hood Memphis lifestyle on his dad's side. The travel between the two made him a very interesting artist, made him the most successful rap artist of all time. Right? Uh. I mean, I'm just going to say like, Having access to two disparate bubbles that are worlds apart and then learning them both at like an 8 out of 10 or 10 out of 10 level makes you an interesting person. I'm not saying that people necessarily from the bubble are not interesting. I got a lot of friends from the bubble that I think are super interesting. But I'm just saying, obviously, everybody's life does shape them to become who they are. But also, it's not just like, oh, I'm from the bubble or I'm not from the bubble. It's your own individual statistics and your own individual, like, curiosity. Yeah, and I don't think everybody who is open-minded and knows a little bit about every culture that doesn't necessarily make them automatically interesting. Sometimes very interesting people do come from the bubble where because they have a certain perspective that you're like, oh, I didn't know that's how you see things or I didn't know that's how that world is like. So they can have access and appear into a different world, which to me is so interesting. So I think like when it comes to the bubble and stuff, again, like you said, it just matters on what you're trying to do in life. Right. If you want to know about everything, then I want to know what the bubble's like. I want to know what outside of the bubble's like. But anyways, guys, uh, any other last takeaways? Uh, I just have a story from Reddit. There's somebody says, I have a bunch of different cousins, boys and girls that grew up in the bubble. And when they went to college, about half of them got really diverse, multiracial friends. And half of them just stuck with whatever they grew up with. Thank you so much for watching. You guys let us know in the comments down below what you think um, about the bubble. Does it make you closed minded? Does it make you ignorant? Those are two different things. Uh, let us know and uh, yeah, let us know if you grew up in the bubble or if you want to raise your family in the bubble. Maybe you want to move to the bubble. Maybe the bubble is more comfortable. Oh, I got one last thing. Somebody said I have a story from church and I always felt like the Asian churches I went to were way more into my life and toxic than the non-Asian churches I went to. And I said, yes, that's probably true, but it's also probably because they cared a lot more about your life at the Asian church too. That's my general opinion. Yeah, if you guys don't, want people to know about your life and be nosy than just be around a bunch of non-Asian people because they won't ask you any questions. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. Please hit that like button. Check out other episodes of the Hot Pop Boys. Until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.